You guys ready for this? Okay, Rodney is coming this morning. Rodney has a word for us this morning. Everybody welcome Rodney. Yeah, just lift up your voices. Just give your heart to Jesus right now. Jesus, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We love you, God. We love your presence, God. But God, we don't want anything else but you, God. We want to know you, Jesus. We want to know you, Jesus. We want to know you, Jesus. We want to know your heart, God. We want to know your love, God. We want to know who you are. So let's step into that, God. Let's step into your heart. Step into knowing you, into walking with you, God. Thanks for who you are, Jesus. Just let us go deeper in your love, God. We love you and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name. So yeah, I have been um, kind of part of this church, I guess, for about a year and a half now, I think. I'm going to be here. I just want to thank Kathy again for inviting me to speak. Like, you guys, I mean, like, isn't she, like, the best? Like, literally, like, like, it's really real. Like, I've been part of a number of different churches, of course, in my life, just like all of you guys have. And she actually is different than anyone else I know, like seriously, like she absolutely does family well, and it's like really amazing, it really does change things, it really does bring a new measure of safety, a new measure of love, a new measure of like allowing people to step into who they are, and it's amazing, so thank you. Yeah. I'm just going to, um, I'm probably going to share a bit of my story with you guys and then just see what God does, just kind of just go with um, whatever the Lord's doing, and let's talk a little bit about um, intimacy with God and what that looks like, and what it looks like to steward and walk with God in that way. So, yeah. So I grew up in the church. I grew up going to um, a church that actually was connected with Toronto. How many of you guys have heard of the movement that happened in Toronto? Okay, not many. Okay, most of you. Okay, so there was like this movement going on in Toronto 20 years ago, a guy named Randy Park. And John Arnott saw this big move kind of come out of that place, and they've seen like millions of people saved, lots of people healed, all this type of stuff. The church I went to was sort of connected with that. It wasn't like the same craziness as all that stuff, but it was just a church that believed in Jesus, believed in hearing God, believed in heard the prophetic, all those types of things. So I grew up around those types of things. Um, but it didn't really, when I was young, it didn't really like hit my grip or like hit like my understanding. I knew that. I grew up believing that God was real, but it didn't, 
wasn't like I knew him. It wasn't like I, my heart was connected with who he is, and I was able to like walk and steer that. So um, we lived in the area um, northeast Pennsylvania where that church was for about um, eight years, and then we moved it to Maine. Um, and I lived in Maine for four years, and while we were up there, we connected with another church, similar, um, similar place, similar like heart, and started learning about like some some of the things of God. The first encounter I ever had with the Holy Spirit was up there. Um, I had this friend of mine who was sitting on the floor, like laying on the floor. He was rolling around, just crying and laughing, going back and forth, and I had no idea what was happening, but I knew maybe it was God. So I kind of just sat down with him and just copied it and just started crying, just because like my friend was crying. So why not cry if your friend's crying? You know? So, but then this person started praying for me, just started like praying like the Father's blessing over me and stuff like that. And, like I could feel that something was going on. I could feel the presence of God, and I didn't like I didn't understand it. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew it was God. So got up from that, and 30 minutes later, all every all the kids are playing. We're all like what eight, nine, ten. So everybody just went back to being a normal kid. And like, and I know now that it was a legitimate encounter because when it, at that time I was like, why are we acting the same way we did before? Like we're supposed to be different right now. We're supposed to. We're supposed, there's something supposed to be different about us. If we just encounter Jesus, then right now our lives should look different. Even though we're 10 years old, our lives should look different. But again, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I kind of just kept copying. Them. But, like, just that there was something planted there, there was something that God was doing, and he was going to just kind of keep moving in later. But yeah, so, my like, my dad is um, a materials engineer, so his company is what moved us around, like, all that. And we moved back down to Pennsylvania after that. And when we moved back down, we moved to this um, suburb region of the city um, called Eastern Pennsylvania. And when we moved there, we started um, doing a lot of things with the with, um, church community. Again, they were connected with all the... The spiritual gifts and stuff like that, so grew up around that. But um, we started bringing in a lot of um, kids and a lot of um, people from the inner city to kind of like just to, you know, my parents wanted to love on kids. My mom just like loves children a lot. So um, we just have like kids constantly at our house and in our home doing stuff that she was also pregnant with. Okay, I have five siblings, let's start with that. So, so, the, um, so the younger two are twins, like the youngest two, they're like 10 years old now. But um, at that time, she was pregnant with the twins. So she was both sick and in bed a lot of the time, both from pregnancy, just there was a couple of complications. But also there were all these kids in her house. So it was kind of like within this like mixture of wanting to minister to people and like wanting to love people and us pursuing that, as well as the fact that we were all homeschooled, so I'm homeschooled too. It's about magic school bus, how many people love magic school bus? Yes, it's a good thing. Um, but in the mix of all those types of things, it was just like there was this um, separation that kind of started happening in our family where um, it, was, it was almost like our our lives, like my sister and me, like the oldest children, like who were kind of aware of what was going on and what was happening around us, um, started like falling through the cracks a little bit. And it wasn't like our parents, my parents like didn't love Jesus, weren't like trying to be intentional, but like it was just my dad was at work and my mom was sick in bed, so we were just kind of left to like, school ourselves and with all these other people kind of coming in and out and just started being like really, like taking, rather than us impacting that culture, we started taking in that culture and started like letting it become part of us. So at that point I got addicted to pornography and bad movies and all this other type of stuff. I was about, um, I think I was 12, 12 at that time. Yeah, and it was just like, it's, you know, those places, just depressed, hopeless, like just hated myself. As soon as I recognized that, like this thing was, I had me and I was just like, I was done with myself, you know, I hated myself, I didn't want to, like, it wasn't like I was suicidal, but I just didn't like myself. And that went on for, like, two years, just of, like, that loss, that brokenness, that, like, that shame, and, like, that, it just, you know, like, when you enter into darkness, it really does take over your vision, like, you really can't see anything else but darkness, and I'm sure you guys know those places where once you see darkness, and once you feel like you're living in darkness, and you've chosen to let your life step into shame and step into a place where your heart is convinced that you are not worth people coming to help you, then it just kind of turns into an interior cycle and you just kind of start, it's almost like a self-deprecating cycle. And that's like what the enemy loves to do. He loves to isolate and then he loves to just kick people out. That's like, what do you want to do with me? Um, but Jesus is good, Jesus is king, so he still wins all the time. Um, but so it took me about two years of struggling with that thing, just hating myself. And then after like a year and a half, I said, God, I can't get out of this myself. Like, you're going to be the one who has to get me out of this. And the whole time, I knew God was real. I knew, like, I could tell he didn't believe me. Like, I could tell he was still there. But I could tell, like, that I wasn't supposed to be what I was doing. 
and I wasn't going to be there forever. Like I knew I just wasn't going to be in that stuff forever. So told God that, and then felt conviction of the Holy Spirit just started like burning, you know, like you guys know that conviction, like just started burning in my heart, like just day after day after day, and just like building for like six months. And after six months, I told my parents what was going on, and then that kind of broke the shame. And then once I got out of the shame, it kind of turned everything around, and I saw my life start like turning back to Jesus. And I gave my life to Jesus right after that. But yeah, so that was nice. <laughs> yeah. um, right after that, um, by, I still, my grade wasn't, so, can you guys can we do this or there? There it is, okay. Um, so my grade still wasn't in a place of like, the knowledge of who God is, it was more just like, okay, I know Jesus is real, I know the gospel is true, so I'm going to follow that. So, just started going after that, and just following Jesus the best I knew how to. So, I knew Jesus went to people because I'd heard that, so I started praying for people wherever I was at, like at our homeschool co-ops. Anyone know homeschool co-ops? Did anyone go to one? Okay. Anyone went to one? No one else? You went to homeschool co-op? Yes. Those things are real. Um, but went to homeschool co-op and prayed for my friends, prayed for friends and parents. Didn't see much happen, but it was just like that, that pursuit, you know, that pursuit of the gospel that just kind of started. And praying and reading my Bible, but didn't really know who Jesus was. Um, but followed in the best I knew how to. So I went to this conference um, a few months after that. This was in 2011 um, when I gave my life to Jesus. And I went to this conference at Global Awakening called Voice of Apostles. And um, saw this, while I was there, I saw this flyer for a trip um, to Brazil called Youth Power Invasion. Um, and I just kind of felt like God was calling me to go. And I didn't, I didn't know that it was a, um, at first I didn't know it was like a mission trip overseas. I thought it was like a BBS type trip. But I just knew like God was calling me to go to this thing. <laughs> I thought it was like one of those trips like where you go to like Tennessee and you like sing some songs with the guitar and like play games and play soccer. Like that's what I thought it was, but it turned out to be this mission trip to Brazil. But I felt like God was still calling me to go. So so we I went and like all the funds were raised and all that type of stuff happened, which was awesome. Um, but then went the next year and God just I just got wrecked. Like I just was completely undone by the presence of God. It was it was just it was the most insane thing I had ever seen. Um, there was a God, there were like all sorts of miracles, all sorts of worship. Bo was actually on that trip, as well as David Paquette, um, Laura was there, um, Josh, uh, Jeff Eppersole was there, like Rafa, I think some of you guys know Rafa was there, like all these, like this is where I started kind of meeting and connecting with these people here too. But um, I was just wrecked. I was just undone. Like, like the presence of Jesus just showed up. Like, it just showed up in the room. Like, we would be in worship, and it was just like you were just completely consumed in the presence of God. Like, like it's not in... You know, there's something like... It wasn't like... It's, it's, there's something different about when the Holy Spirit comes and consumes you. Like... You know, like like that Isaiah 6 idea where okay, like Isaiah saw the Lord on the throne and then the tree was growing, was filling the temple. So there was this continuous filling of the glory of God that was so magnificently overwhelming to him that every single thing inside of him cried out, woe is me, I'm undone. Um, and there was like that undoing that kind of just was happening in each one of us. Like, like here, we, I was talking with Bo yesterday about um, this trip like, that we were on and just like the, the measure of the presence of God and the glory of God just kind of, it was like, it was... You can cut it with a knife, you know, like you were just, you were just stuck in love, like you were lost in love, and like every single thing about, like my DNA changed, my, the fabric of who I was like was completely different, like literally the foods I wanted to eat afterwards were different than the foods I wanted to eat before, the music I wanted to listen to before was different than the music I listened to afterwards, like everything about who I am just changed, just from this place of the presence of Jesus that was just absolutely stunning, um, and the first time I saw Miracles was there, the first miracle I saw, um, there was a woman who had sweaty palms, like just her hands were like constantly sweating. And it was through, we didn't have a translator, so I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to try to pray for this lady. We had this little card that had a translation on the back, so we broke in Portuguese. So just start praying for her. We prayed for her three times just for her hands to stop sweating. And after three times, her hands just we weren't sweating anymore. They were just completely dry. And we were just like, wait, this stuff that I've heard about for so long actually is true. It's actually real. And something so simple as just like some, seeing a change like that happen, but like the reality of it was so deep and so beautiful that it would just change something. Um, and we just went after it from there. We saw um, there was a guy who had 17 screws in his leg, um, I think it was his right leg. 
Um, and just in the meeting, he was there, and his leg just started functioning like it was completely normal. Like as if all the metal like, either became like just regular muscle or whatever, like needed to be there, just became absolutely normal. I saw tears disappear, uh, blind eyes were open, like all sorts of things happened on that trip. But just was wrecked, just undone by Jesus. Like he fell in love, like fell so deeply in love with the person Jesus Christ. So I got back from that trip and like everything was just, it was just so different. You know, intimacy with God just like opened up. It was like all of a sudden Jesus just becomes your best friend. Like you just entered into that place of communion and friendship. And it was like I have like these like you know those times when God just kind of comes into your room and God just like starts teaching you, starts speaking to you, starts showing you all these different things. And like in that time, I would just kind of spend hours with God and just kind of just begin to like learn what it was to know Jesus and like, just discover what it was to walk in communion, walk in friendship. Like Jesus wants to be our best friend. Like He doesn't want to just be um, He doesn't want to just be the Father, the God who the God who does things for us, does things through us, does things um, to show himself to people, but he actually just wants to be our friend. He actually just wants to be the one who's the, literally the closest thing to who we are. Like, the one who, the one who, when our hearts, um, like, our heart's attention just is totally towards him. Like, you guys know that feeling, why do you know that feeling when you like, first get, fall in love with somebody? And like, there's just that constant, like, your heart, your heart just kind of always is turning in its attention towards this person. It just, like, always goes there. Like, when you're, when your mind, when you're, like, in reps, when you're in, just, when you're working, when you're, like, when you're just being yourself, like, all of a sudden your heart just turns to this place. It just turns to this place of, like, my, my, my everything, like, is to know this person. And my everything is to, like, to get deeper in, in, in knowing, like, what does this person think? How do they think about me? How do they think about the world? Like, what, like what's, what's their thoughts about the world? What do they like to do? Like, what do they like to do when they're just sitting and looking at the beach? Like, what do they like to do? What's their, what's the way they talk? Like, like, do they talk with an accent? Do they talk with, like, a drawl? Do they talk with, like, a weird, like, Asian accent? Like, how do they, like, how do they talk? You know, like, how do they, like, how do they, when they're seeing this person in front of me, like, how do I see this person similar to the way that the person I love sees them? You know, and this is just like, you just become enamored with this other person. And like, it was just that, like, that enamorment with the person of Jesus. Like, that's what God designed us to live in for eternity. Like, it wasn't just a, a once in a lifetime thing that was meant to be like a first moment of knowing God. It was meant to be something where we start in love and we end in love and all the way through is just consumed more more and more deeply being consumed in this love. So that kind of started and kind of just opened up when I got um, home from that trip and just like wild stuff happened. Um, so, but after that, um, just started, like I was 15 at the time, so still had to do high school, still had to do home school, all those things kept going, um, happening. And had, like, had rough stuff too happen during these times. Lots of, because there was no one around me during that space, like, I did have a lot of, like, I didn't know how to um, express that to anyone around me because I didn't have, like, a, a big language or a big grid for like, how to do that. So it kind of was really difficult for me to start connecting with people around me for a while. It took me a little bit of, like, just time to kind of get into connection, into connection with people and stuff like that. So that took a bit from, um, and lots of religiosity kind of creeped in there too, just in not knowing like how do I how do I take this whole like how do I let this whole world become my normal in a deeper way? So lots of that stuff started happening. Went on for like a year until God kind of helped me out. <laughs> um, and then after that, um, I went to went on a couple other trips to um, to um, Honduras on a Waipio trip and went to Mozambique with Iris, and that's where I kind of first started connecting with the Iris ministry that I'm more connected with now. So um, um, I went to Mozambique for three months once I graduated high school at Harvest School, and then I went to Global Awakening for two years after that, and that's kind of how I did ministry school when I came here. So that's kind of just a short idea of like some of the stuff that I've like, been around and then just coming and meeting you guys. Like this place literally is, like from all the places I've been around the planet, like, this place does family differently. 
Like I'm really like, we actually have something here that is like a need for the entire world. Like the nations need to know like the family that like exists in the measure here. Like it actually is something beautiful here that we have. So it's beautiful. So, we all know Jesus, right? We all, like, everyone in here at least has heard the name of Jesus before. And have some, most of you have, have some sort of relationship with him already. Um, we know God is our creator. He's our father. He's our, like, he's the one who created all things. He's the one who, like, every single thing in the universe was, it was created by him in the beginning. Like, we know it was also it's also held together by him in a very real way. Like it says in Colossians 2, um, he like, or in Colossians 1, it says he holds everything together. Like he's the one who consists everything together. Like it's been fun like looking at like with what I'm studying in science, in the science room, we're actually starting to discover more and more like, wait, there's actually something deep that's holding everything together. Like when we don't know what that is, we can't figure it out. We can't figure out why the universe works the way it does. They literally can't figure out, okay, why does the universe, um, work and move the way it does, like they're doing all these things, they just can't figure it out, it's because of Jesus, you know, so, like, it's, so he holds everything together, and he is the creator, and he loves us, and he created us through that place of love, because God in himself is the one who embodies and is the literal being of love, like there's no love outside of him, so he, out of that place, created the world and created us for us to know what it was to be ones who were created to walk in and walk in fellowship with and walk in freedom with our Father, like our Father, the Lord God. That's what it talks about in Genesis 1. Like, let us make man in our image. Let's make him to rule over the fish and the birds of the air and all these different things. And so he created us to know him. He created us to like, walk in a communion with him. And he created us with that ability to choose within that like reality of that he is all in all, he made us, okay, he made us so that we could choose to either be in communion with him or not, for us to know what it was to love him. Like, it's just, like in a simple way, for you to know like somebody loves you, they actually have to choose you. They have to choose who you are. They have to choose, okay, I want this person. I want you. I don't want all these other things over here. I want you. And that's like one of the deep parts of what love is. Like, just I want to choose that you. So he chose, he made us with that ability. Do you want to choose me, or do you want to choose this thing over here? And he put that opportunity before us. And of course we know man chose the opposite. Man didn't choose to like follow the Lord and kind of walk with him. So man fell into darkness. And that's where we know, um, like that's where the old man comes from. So we, like when we were first created, we were created to have a community, and then all of a sudden when we fell, we fell into the sin nature. We became children of the father of the devil. Like we, we entered into that realm of darkness. So our sin nature and all those things came from that beginning point. Like we were given over to darkness. And this is what like I got to talk about. Um, when I was in India, a lot of the time, like in India there, the understanding of the gospel is um, is weird in that they kind of mix other stuff in with it. So we understand that there's light and darkness. There is, if you live in the light, then you're going to display and be part of the light. If you live in darkness, then you're just going to be, you're going to show darkness, you're going to show what darkness is. And when we look at our lives, if we recognize we're living in darkness, then there's something wrong with what's going on. Like, if we, if we think that we're living in light, that everything around us that's happening is darkness, then something's wrong. Something is wrong with what we're believing, something's wrong with what we're doing. It has to be different than what we're saying it is, because what we're saying isn't working. So that's, was like, that's a big challenge, and we know that Jesus in John 1 says he was the light that entered into the world. And it's like how a lot of people, like we got to kind of preach just to like see, like we want people to enter into the light. But in a, in a similar way, like we're saying here, when we, when we sinned, everyone fell into darkness. And if you don't believe in Jesus, that's where your present state is at. Like that's where we live at. And Jesus, like God for all eternity was like, 
okay, I want these people to know me, and these people I know are gonna chill out, but they're not gonna really like follow me, so that's not cool. So I wanna send somebody to help them out so that they can kind of be better than they were. Um, in loose terms, probably like the pigeon translation we were reading. Um, <laughs> um, but pigeon translation is a wacky translation if any of you guys have ever heard of it. It literally is like, it's made for like this Hawaiian tribe, but it's kind of wacky. Like it's just like God in this guy, he's a cool good he's a cool guy and he wants to help you out and make you have the good inside. And like that's the whole translation. Like it just says this over and over and over. It's really weird. But it's like a, I guess it's a good language for some people, I don't know. Um, but he wanted us to know him and he wanted us to walk in that place of connection with him. But we chose darkness. So he wanted to bring us out of that. So he sent himself. He came as Jesus. And we know this is the gospel. Jesus Christ came to the earth to save sinners. He came to the earth to save the lost. And he walked on the earth as a man. Like he didn't, so he was God and he is God, but he came to the earth as a man. He came to the earth being fully God and fully man and displayed what it was like to walk in full relationship with God. Like he wasn't just being a God and being the one who was the express nature of the full trinity. But he also was the one who was displaying what it was to walk as a man in communion with God. Like he actually, like what he did was as a man. It was as a person who knew the Father and gave everything to the Father. And through the Father did good works. So through the Father, Jesus did good works. So everything he did, he would he said, okay, when I lay, when I cast a demon on this person, the kingdom of God has come upon you. So he was living in communion with the Father and releasing the presence of God to somebody and seeing the demonic battle to God. And he would go and he would heal paralytics. Like it talks about like just the ridiculousness of what Jesus did is stunning when you read the Bible. Like it would it'll say, like, and Everybody in this entire region of Judea came to him. All the epileptics, all the paralytics came, and he healed them all. Like, so this is literally like, say 15,000 people coming, like 5,000 paralytic people, 5,000 epileptics coming all at once to this man, Jesus, and every single one of them is just getting healed. And that's like what he saw day after day after day. And this is what he considered, like, this is normal life with the Father, you know? I'm just, I'm hanging out with my Father and just see 5,000 paralytics get healed. You know, like that was his normal every day. And that's why you have like had crowds of thousands and thousands of people following him around. They would be following him around the countryside. Like it wasn't just like something. This is why, like in in the Book of Acts, it says like we didn't like the things that were done. The apostle, I think it was Peter, who says the things that were done were not done in a corner. Like you guys all know about what happened. Do you guys all know about these things that were done through this man Jesus? Because there were literally like thousands and thousands and thousands of people following Jesus around the country of Israel. Like just chasing him because they knew he did something different than anybody else who walked with authority. And this was what he modeled as a man living in communion with the Father. And this is what he said was, what as I do, greater works will you do. So this man, Jesus Christ, in perfect communion with the Father, healing entire regions, greater works will you do. So Jesus did this, and he walked in this communion, and he displayed this light to the, to the entire nation of Israel. And like, the nation of Israel hated him, they didn't want to walk with him, so they killed him. And, you know, we all know this, like, 40 stripes on his back, like he was absolutely marred, totally disfigured, like you couldn't recognize him, you literally couldn't recognize what he looked like from the level of torture that they put him through, and they nailed him to a cross and he gave his life for us there, like and the, like all darkness and all sin and all stains and every single bit of darkness for all eternity before he was there and everything afterward was all put on him in that moment, in that time right there, and he lit, he took and bore the weight of those things and he became those things. You know, we know the Bible says he became sin. He became sin for us. So he took on every single thing that had ever happened and will happen and he took it on in that moment. 
And this is what the Bible, this is the gospel. We know this. So every single thing that ever happened was taken in that moment. And he died. He gave his life as a perfect sacrifice. Like, all, like so many cultures around the world have this idea of sacrifice, this idea that um, that for sin or for things that are wrong, there must be bloodshed. There must be something, an atonement for those things. So Jesus was that perfect atonement. The one who was in communion with the Father didn't sin, didn't allow his life to go anywhere else, but just displayed what it looked like to be in love. And then he gave his life freely for us. So he died there, and he gave everything for us. And he, like we know, the veil was torn, so the presence of God was open to all of us, and now we're able to freely enter in, and freely go in and find pasture, find rest, find communion with God, because he gave his life for us. So he died, and he was put in the tomb, we know this, and then three days later, he didn't stay there, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead, and when he rose from the dead, like, death had no power over him. All authority in heaven and on earth was given to him in that time. And he had every single, like, all authority. Like, it wasn't just some of it. It wasn't just some of the power. It wasn't just some of the authority in heaven and on earth. Like, so all of it, like, it was all of it. So Jesus took back every single thing that was stolen. And he said, I am alive. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. So we got to, so through that, he went to the disciples, showed all these different things. We know the story. And he then ascended to the Father and told the disciples to wait until like, until one would come that would give them power so that they could do what he was doing. Because we know he says in John 15, greater works will you do um, because I go to my Father. So he went to the Father so we could do what he was doing. So and then we look at the book of Acts. And he goes up, and then the disciples come, and they receive the Holy Spirit, and they start preaching the gospel. And what do we see? We see thousands and thousands of people getting saved. We see people just being moved by the presence of God, being cut to the heart. We see persecution. We see, like, lots of, like, warfare in that sense. But we also see a gospel that is spreading and a gospel that is increasing all over the known world at that time. And it was just, like, happening in a stunning way. And men and women were both being like exalted in a new way that you hadn't seen people who walked in that like a level of authority like that before. Like this one fun thing, um, in the time of that history, they have um, they had like we know like we have sayings today like let's see um, like sayings like you know like a, like beat around the bush, don't beat around the bush, just something like that. So one of their sayings in that day um, that they would write down is those Christian women. It would say those Christian women. And what that meant was that the women who were Christians were so different and so had so much more authority and strength in them that it was known that like those people are so different than anybody else. And that was what they said about them. And that was just like that was something you just say off the top that everybody would say. So like the culture was so rocked by the gospel in that time, which is beautiful. So this is our gospel. This is Jesus Christ crucified, who lived and died and rose again for us. So when we give our lives to Jesus and when we choose to lay down everything of who we are before him and choose to give that whole dead man, old man, old life, uh, choose to give all the stuff to Jesus, then we are identified and taken into that crucifixion in the spirit. So that crucifixion that happened to Jesus Christ on the cross, we are nailed to Jesus Christ with him in that place of crucifixion and death. So our old nature dies and is given over to death. And in that same way as like the act of baptism, we do the act of baptism where enter into the water and that's like the same, the symbol of okay, everything is dying, everything is going away and we come out for something new. So when we give our lives to Jesus, everything that's old dies, it all goes away. And then we become new creations, right? So in 2 Corinthians 5, 19, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away and the new is here. So, are you guys following me so far? Are you guys, let me, okay. So, the old has passed away and the new is here. So, the new, the new, that word new means something that never existed before. So, we as people of God are a creation. Like, we know God created everything. And he says that this is a new creation. These people who I've Identified with and came into their new. There's something I've never made before. It's something completely different. 
something completely different. Like we're made and we're designed like, and we're all designed as people. We're designed to be awesome and to have nice hair and to like play sports and eat, drink coffee and eat donuts. But when we become followers of Jesus, we're actually something new. We're actually something that's never existed before in the creation of the world. We've actually become something different. And it's through grace. It's, it's not through our own works. It's not through something we do. It's only through Jesus that we can do this. But when we become a new man, then our inner nature changes. And this is just the, this is just the gospel that is for every single one of us. Something inside of us that was dead, that old nature, that old belief system, that old life that we used to live in is dead and it's nailed to the cross and becomes something new. And that newness is something that comes in it's because God comes inside of us. So God comes inside of us and gives us his nature. He became sin that we can become righteousness. So now we are creations that are designed to live in right standing with the Father and in the way that he lived. And this is just our natural state of being. Like this isn't something that like I mean, like sometimes in the world we talk about like you're supposed to be a business leader you're supposed to be a great scientist you're supposed to be these things and like it's something you aspire to be you know it's something you like okay this thing if i can do 20 years of great work and i can be a scientist forever or if i can be like a dancer and i could do all this stuff on broadway in new york and just go all to all these places or if i do all these all this electrician work i can be like a millionaire one day it's not something we aspire to it's not something that's like far off in the distance it's something that you put right in here he put it right in here. In every single one of you is the entire fullness of the Godhead. All of Jesus lives in every one of you. All of them. He didn't hold back any part of himself. He gave his entire life for us, and now he came and put his entire life in us. He put his everything, all of his love, all of who he is, put it in us. And he did it so we could be something new. Be something that never existed before. And this is, um, this new creation is by grace, right? We know this word grace. So, grace, in like the original language, it means divine empowerment. So, God giving power, right? So grace would be such that when we come into the new life of Jesus, everything is possible. It's just all possible. It's not, it's not a, it's, again, it's not an aspiration, it's not something far from the distance, it's just possible. It's just literally possible. Every single thing he did, all of a sudden, just became your normal. It just became the thing you do when you wake up in the morning. It just became like, just the way you think. It just became that. That's just all of a sudden just who you are. Like that. When Jesus comes and lives inside of us, all of a sudden everything's possible. And why don't we, why doesn't that, why does it look like that when we're, like, when we, when we wake up in the morning? Why does it look like everything is possible? So we have two things that the Bible tells us about that. We have Romans 12 too. We know, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove the will of God. So, confirmation to the world means we're going back to that old man, that, that old way that we used to live. Transformation is when we become more and more like the Jesus we already are, we already are on the inside. So when we choose to think about things and choose to put our attention on things that are of the world and are of the things of darkness, then we're actually almost like, you'll get what I'm saying, by faith, seeing sin come through us. When we believe that our, our nature and our normal life is sin, then we're, we're, our expectation is for us to live in sin. And it's almost like you're, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're just walking deeper and deeper into the darkness that you've always seen in your life. And it's like, okay, I'm not changed, uh, but that's actually just a belief system that you're fulfilling. It's not the gospel. It's just not the gospel. Okay, but so Jesus said, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. 
So we take our minds and we let them enter into what Jesus had for us. So we look, we open this thing up and we say, Jesus, who are you? How do you, like, how do you see me? How do you think about me? How do you feel about me? How do you love me? Like, how do I know how much you love me? Because your love is ridiculously so deep for me. And we let that, we just let ourselves stay in it because it's always accessible. Yeah. Love is always accessible. There's never a moment in our lives that we could have that God's love isn't fully available for us. Because He never changes. He doesn't ever turn His attention from us. He doesn't ever have problems too big that we can, He can't fix them in our hearts. Like, we're never so... Our problems are never so big that He can't fix them. Our emotions are never so deep that He can't over, like, take them over by his love. There's no place that his love can't come. It's literally impossible. Literally impossible for us to miss his love. So he made that love available so that we can become like him. So that, because that's the best thing possible for us. Our Father in heaven wanted us to know what it looks like to be like him because that's the best thing that's possible for our entire lives. Like, you want to have the most radically awesome, stunning life? Like, be like Jesus, you know? Like, give everything to Jesus and you'll actually find so much life in that that it pales, everything else pales in comparison. Like, all the drugs, all the alcohol, all the partying, all the exploration of the world, all the traveling to all the different nations, all those things, like, they don't, they don't compare to Jesus. They don't actually compare to the love of Jesus. It's like just being in the presence of God. Like just taking a moment, just being alone with the Father. And like, it, like even like in this lifetime here, like our ability to just be with God, like to be with Jesus and to be, to abide in his love and to know his heart. Like it's so much better than anything else. It's so much better than anything else. We don't have any, we're not designed for anything else. Everything else doesn't actually work. It doesn't work. And I know, but like, we've all tried it. We've all tried other things and they, they enjoy it for a moment, but they create darkness inside. Like, I've been, like, I've been to, like, I think Seven Nations, something like that. None of it can, like, none of those things you see, none of those things that happen compared to Jesus. Compared to the name and the person of Jesus Christ. The face of Jesus is the most beautiful thing that exists. It's the most beautiful thing that exists for us right now. And for us to give ourselves to anything else besides this person, this love, this person, Jesus Christ, it's, it's worthless. It doesn't compare. It doesn't have any, it doesn't have any, like, it's like not on the same scale, you know? Like, it's almost like, think about, like, think about, like, one of those cupcakes from, like, Giant Eagle that's kind of stale and, like, right at the end of its life, like, on that shelf, that's, like, the shelf that's, the one that's like on sale shelf, and you're like little cupcakes there. You buy it because you're like super hungry at the moment, and you eat it, but it's like terrible. You're like, why did I buy this cupcake for 99 cents? You could have used it on something else. Or you go to like Oakmont Bakery and like get one of these cakes. We had one of those cakes yesterday, like this cake that was like cheesecake and then chocolate cake. It was like either Oakmont, it was ridiculously good. <laughs> it was amazing. But like, they're not like, they're both desserts, but they're not on the same scale. Like you're just not on the same scale. Like one is disgusting and one is like ridiculously beautiful, you know? So like Jesus, we look at like you could do all the stuff in the world you want to. You can have all the boats, all the all the parties, all the you can have all the money, all those types of things. Like I've I've interacted with people who have all that stuff. Like they're the people who are quote unquote running the planet and doing all this type of stuff and they still like have that same brokenness. Like they still have that same weight. There's something deeper that I'm looking for. Like, talk to people in the new age. Like, they're like, okay, I interact with all this stuff in the spirit. and see auras and all this type of stuff. And they're still like, well, there's something deeper that I'm missing inside. There's something that I'm not getting about this entire spiritual world I'm seeing. Like, there's people who are in the world of the arts and they do all the amazing artwork. They do all the amazing music stuff. And they like, have all the awesome sounds you think are really cool. But there's still something missing in here. There's still something missing. And it's actually what they're all searching for. The desire of the nations is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is what every single person on the earth is looking for. So we have the most 
amazing thing that exists in the earth, the most amazing thing, the presence of God, is worth everything. And to give everything for anything else is, is worthless. It's not, it's not worth our time. We have, there's so much more of God like, that we can explore and we can enter into. Like, everything else is just not worth it. It's not worth it. But, so Jesus comes and lives inside of us, and we, like, the, the old nature dies and we become something new. So when we become something new, the new nature is what we become. And that new nature is something that's by grace. So when we receive the grace of God, it becomes completely possible, completely probable for us to walk in that. Like we're able to do what God said. In the Old Covenant, we weren't able to do it. And that was the point of the Old Covenant. All these laws, like slay a cow and then wash your hands seven times, wait from the nighttime to the morning time, and then you'll be fine. You can go back into the camp. Like Old Testament, like all those things God did to show us, okay, you can do all these things, but you still, like, you can't actually do it can't actually get there. So that relationship with God, like, we've all, like, there's been those times, like, where you have that relationship with God where it's like, okay, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do that, but I just can't get there. 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 I just can't, I just can't be honest. I just can't be generous. I just can't love this person. I just can't be offended. I just can't be, um, I just can't drink this alcohol. I just can't get away from this pornography addiction. I just can't be happy. I, can't, I just can't have joy. All those things are, were designed to show us we need Jesus. It's just designed, it's designed to show us all life doesn't work without Jesus. It just doesn't work. But in the new creation, it's all accessible. The freedom for all those things is completely accessible because he died. Because he gave all of his life for us, he put inside of us the power to do those things, to overcome the works of the enemy. Jesus came, this is Acts 10 38, Jesus came to do good works and to destroy the works of the enemy. And that was all the works that happened in you before Jesus. So all those things are dead. Completely dead. So, this new nature that we live in, it's, it's stunning. It's like a beautiful thing. And we get to know new life with Jesus. And the greater works we know in John, um, it talks about greater works we do, like I said before, greater works we do so I go to the Father. So that same measure of works that Jesus did on the earth when he saw thousands of people like following around, being healed, being set free, being saved, that was the normal life of the Christian. Christian. So every single one of you is created. Alan, Alan, you are created to see lots and lots and lots of people get healed and lots and lots of people get saved because you follow Jesus. And you have cool socks too. I know. <laughs> so like so we're all designed in who we are, like regardless of age, regardless of what we look like, we're designed to see the fullness of the cross come through us. To see all of what Jesus to come through us. And this is what we give everything for. This is what we give our lives for. So what was the difference between Jesus' life and the life we see in our lives right now? We see Jesus, um, we see Jesus as one who lived in perfect, his, his will was perfectly submitted to the Father. Right? So his, like, we, we know that's so not my will, but yours be done. So he walked in a way that his entire will was given over to the Father. And I think that one of the big pieces that I feel like there could be, um, as, as a community and just as a global community even, um, we can begin to walk into is like to see the same things Jesus did, we have that same heart posture, the same place of heart where we just choose to give everything to the Father. Like we all know those areas where we think, like, it's the, it's the funnest story, like, where we, where, like, so many times we're like, God, I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything for you, but don't make me work at Walmart. Don't make me go back home. Don't make me go to this country. And then all of a sudden God's like, well, let's go there. Like, let's go right there to where you thought you were going to go. But it's, I, I feel like sometimes it creates that idea that he's not a good father. Like a lot of times we think, okay, why are we, why are we, why, are we, why is he making us do what we don't want to do? Like, 
why doesn't he just, like, he cares about my heart, he cares about what I like, he cares about what I think, so why wouldn't he help me out in that way? But he's not as, I feel like, he's not as interested in what we're doing as he is in this. He's not super interested in whether you work at Target or you work at Giant and eat those cupcakes, or if you, like, be our missionary in, like, Tanzania. He's not super interested in that as much as he's interested in this. He's interested in that you give every single thing to him. Everything. He wants us to give everything to him. It's not the it's not the sometimes thing, it's not the not the back and forth and stuff. All we are, just we lay it down. We just lay it down and it's worth it. It's not because he's a harsh father, it's not because he's trying to make us do something that's not possible, it's because he loves us. It's because it's the best for us, it's because it's so simple in him. It's so it's such a delight. It's such a joy to give everything to our father. When we actually give everything, it actually it becomes, this might sound wild, but it becomes easier. Because we actually go from being not in grace to being in grace. And grace is what makes things possible. So everything, like, we, we don't know, things don't work outside of grace. Like when we try to do things or when we try to make money, we try to do life, it just doesn't work. And you're like, you're like fighting yourself type of thing. But when you enter into grace, it's like you're entering into that river. You know, you're entering into that place where everything becomes simple. Everything becomes alive. Everything has life that just kind of flows out of it because it's connected to life itself. So when we actually choose to take all of our hearts and all of our lives, all of our minds, and just lay them down and enter into that place of believing what God says about us, then everything becomes easier. It becomes the easiest thing possible. The easiest thing possible, actually, is to follow Jesus. Everything actually else, everything else is actually going to be more difficult. <laughs> it doesn't work out either, so why do it? You know? <laughs> but, you know. So, we have this life, this new life that God wants us to enter into and give everything to Jesus. But, um, I want to talk a little bit about just what friendship with God looks like. And like how we want to do that, because it's really fun. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, like, I have these amazing friends around here, like Sarah and Amy and Seth and Jackie, you got to start knowing, like, Tim and Em, and all these guys just got to hang out together. It's, like, super fun. Like, I really had, like, such awesome people to, like, hang out with all the time, you know, like, and they, like, love Jesus so much and, like, do life so well. But we actually have, we have some old people here, you guys. Like, like just getting to know some of you, like, in the past few weeks, like, Gunner and, like, Getting to, I've gotten to know Kathy a bit more in like the past few weeks than I have like a, like before this time recently like and it's just like the the level of the level of awesomeness that these people are is just awesome it's great <laughs> like these people are really some cool people um, but we get to like we get to hang out and interact with each other and talk about whatever and just do life together and it's so like it's so filling you know but, like you get to enjoy each other you get to enjoy people you get to enjoy being around people who are who just care about you. You know, like the people they're not they're not interested in something they're not trying to get something from you. They just care. And they just like want you to eat their chicken and they just want you to like, just be around them and eat their bananas and stuff. It's good. So like I I love it. And like that's like friendship is designed to be something where we're able to rest and we're able to run together. You know, we're able to run after um, what we want to do with you know, the purpose we have together. And friendship with God is something similar to that, you know? When we get to enter into friendship with God, God, God is our Father, and God is our Creator. Um, His presence is unlike any other. His presence is like some, we've had like encounters. <laughs> We 
When I was in um, India this summer, there was I was going in this one church, um, through this one church, and like just praying for people where I preach the gospel and stuff, and then just going through and praying for people in this room. And in this in this one church, there was this um, woman woman who well, actually I can start. So there was this. So we were going through this church praying for people, and then I got to this one man um, that was there. And all of a sudden, this, like, the smell of oil just kind of started coming from him. Like, I walked into him, there was just oil. And I, like, asked him, like, to, like, he said, did you put, like, lotion on it? Like, is there, like, cream wine, some oil or something? There was nothing. Like, it wasn't like it was coming from anything. But, like, just the fragrance of the presence of God was just coming off of him like oil. And he actually didn't know, he wasn't following Jesus, really. He wasn't baptized, they say. Um, over there, being baptized is a big part of like giving your life to Jesus. But the presence of God just was, it was just coming off of him like a, like a fragrance of oil, just to show the, like the presence of God. It's something, it's so tangible and it's so beautiful. It's so life altering. It's so, it, it's what everything inside of you longs for. You know, it's, it's, it's your heart. It's your, it's, it's so good. It's just so lovely. He's so lovely, he's so beautiful, he's so gracious, he's so kind, he, and it all comes in his presence. It all comes in his presence. He shows up and he, he meets with us and he, and he talks with us and he, he, he just displays his love to us and he just comes, he just comes. And he came on this man and it was so beautiful just seeing that. Um, but there was also another woman there at a different church, we prayed for her. And she like, she was into a bunch of other stuff before, like Hindu stuff. But when she came, she experienced the presence of God, and she was like, "What is this? Like, this is so different than anything else I've ever had in my life. Anything, anything I've ever experienced." And she like seen things in the spirit, like had voices talk to her, all sorts of stuff. But when the presence of God came, it's just so different than everything else in all of creation. It's so different. So that presence is the presence that we were designed to commune with. We know Moses walked face to face with God, and it says, God spoke with Moses as a man speaks to his friend. And in 2 Corinthians 5, it says that the glory we walk in is greater than Moses, right? So we're walking something deeper. So God designed us to walk in a place where we just, we just sit with him. We just be with him. It's unlike anything else, we're just with him. It's, it's so simple and so profound at the same time, you know? Like, we're just being with our friend, but it changes everything. We're just simply turning our affection and our hearts to him. But everything in the world changes. We simply give everything to him. But he changes the entire world through us. We simply say to someone, Jesus loves you. But all of heaven comes and shows itself to this person in that moment. We simply put our hand on somebody and say, I'm, I'm, I pray, God, would you heal them? I'm just saying words. But all of heaven comes and backs it up because he lives inside of us. So we, so he designs us to be friends with him. We get to sit with him, and get to give. And we get to walk with him. And I feel like there's this invitation that God's bringing us into, where we just get to enter into that place of friendship. And just taking it back to like, God, what do you think about me? What do you think about the flowers outside? What do you think about my job? What do you think about my donuts? Like, I love donuts. Like, I don't even, like, do you like donuts, God? Because I really like donuts, you know? Like, just that place of connection where every, where your whole heart is just so, just so, like, it's so, like, you know, like, like, you know when your GPS is, like, I'm trying to think of a good example, like, let's see. When, okay, here's a good example. So when, like, a little kid has a toy, like a baby has a toy, and you take it from them, like without, like, we know that as parents, distraction is such a good thing for taking toys away. Like, you gotta distract or something like before you take the toy that they, you don't want them to have away. So like, but if you just snatch the toy and start walking away, that kid is locked on that toy. 
like they're locked on it for like at least 15 minutes or at least until you get them to like drink some milk or something like that. Like they're just locked in so they're gonna cry, they're gonna follow, you're gonna chase you around, do whatever they can to get back to that toy that they want. So like us, he, he designed us, he designed us to be like that little child. He designed us to be such that that thing that he designed us for at the beginning was taken away from us. And we're gonna do anything we can. We're gonna cry, we're gonna scream, we're gonna run, we're gonna do whatever we can to get back to that thing that is Jesus. It's ours, because he came in, he came inside. But he wants us to chase him too. He wants us to chase him like a little kid, like who doesn't want anything else but that toy they had before, that's just the best toy ever because I have it. So we, so he's inviting us into that place of of pursuit, that place of being friends with him. So we sit with him and we open up the Bible. In John 6 it says, my words to you are spirit and they are life. So that life that came into us when Jesus came in and gave us grace, gave us power to live, we are continuously filled with that life by entering into this. By entering into this. Like we, like there's a, let me see, there's in Ephesians, you can turn there if you want to Ephesians two, I believe. Ephesians three. Ephesians three nineteen it says to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So this is something we know. Paul is praying for the Ephesian church. And he's praying for them, so we know this is like a good prayer to pray. Like, you probably should pray something that's in the Bible, because it's, like, it's just the Bible, so why not? Um, so it says, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. So there's this entering into knowing love that he still has for us. And this is that pursuit of a little child. And then it says, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So we're Christians, and God's in us, and he, and he, all of who he is came inside of us. But there's more. There's more filling. There's, somehow, like, he, somehow he's all, he, he's all in there, but he wants to be all more in there, you know, like, he wants to go deeper. So that word means every single room in a house. That's what the original word means, to be filled with all the fullness. It means every single room in a house being filled up. Like, it's almost like... In a hotel, there's one room filled, and then all the rest of the rooms get people too. Like that's what he's wanting. That's what he's inviting us into, to where we were filled with God, but he wants to fill us even some more because he's God and he can. So he's inviting us into this deeper knowledge, and it comes through this too. It comes through the Word, knowing Him in that place. It comes through worship. We know like that in He come He. He's enthroned upon the praise of his people, like in that place of worship. That was one of the things that wrecked me when I was in Brazil that first time. Like the, the worship there, like he just came, he just was there. And that's accessible to all of us every time we worship. Every time we worship, we can just be sitting like in a room listening to some Jesus culture, and God just comes. We can be sitting in a room listening to Kerry Joe, and he just comes. He just wants to come, he just wants to be with us. And he comes through, we get to give our hearts in prayer, and we get to give our hearts in like, just praying, but like, in that interaction conversation with God, God, what do you think about me? I like, I want to think the same thing about myself. I want to be with you. And just being a friend. Just being a friend. And this is the invitation that changes the world. This invitation for us to know him, and to be friends with him, and to just do life with him, and to give everything to him. Just being in that, is the same thing that's needed for like all the other world prophecies, so all the other things we need, all the money we need, all the all the like stuff we need, all the property problems, all the sex trafficking problems, all the like the world issues we see, all the violence, all the problems are just solved in this, this friendship, communion. We do this and we get this right, and we fall in love with Jesus, we follow him, all this stuff will work out too. All this stuff will so he's inviting us into that. He's inviting us into friendship. So, like, I feel like this is just an invitation. Like, just to, again, give everything to Jesus. 
and to not turn our attention, you know, not turn our attention to anything else, but just stay locked in on Jesus. Stay locked in on our lover, our best friend, and not give anything to anything else, because all, all the rest of the stuff is worthless. All the rest of it is worthless. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, we know it doesn't fill us up. It doesn't work. But let's just really give everything to Jesus. Let's really give everything to Jesus and start pursuing him. Day after day, day after day, if you're in love, if you're in love, because you are, you are in love, you're wrapped up in love. So we get to give everything to it. So I want to open up the front to anyone who wants to like just come or like to step into that. I don't suggest anyone who just wants more. And we're just gonna like take some time to pray and just to like to to pursue more of God and just like ask him for more of his presence. So if any of you want that or more, you can just go up to the front. Spirit, we just invite you, God. We just invite your presence, God. We just say more of your presence, God. More of your presence, God. We want more of you. We want more of you, God. God, we want to give you everything, God. We don't want to live a double life, Father. We don't want to be in one place saying one thing and doing another. We want to give everything to Jesus, God. We want to be your friends, Jesus. We belong to you, Jesus. We belong to you, Jesus. We want more of your presence, God. We want more of your presence, God. We want more of your presence, God. We want to know you, God. We want more of you, God. I just want to invite everyone up here to just, like, in your own words, just give your heart to Jesus and just, like, give all, like, let it, like, let him have it, you know, like, give him everything inside of you. He's not afraid for you to lift your voice. He's not afraid for you to, like, let your heart cry out to him. So just go for it, God. It's just in your own words, in your own voice, just give your hearts to Jesus.
Is there someone who's a Jennifer or a Jen? Jennifer or Jen, are you know a Jennifer or a Jen? Almost like instead of you 
giving your heart to people, your heart's gonna be already connected. I don't know if that makes sense, like where you're just gonna be in a place of just constant connection with these people, it's gonna bring you freedom. And it's gonna be like bring a place where you're just able to like, you're free to be yourself. You're just free to be yourself because like the Father like, just so wants to open up like freedom to be yourself because like he puts so much gold and beauty and life inside of you that like he's been like, he, there's been bits and pieces that have been coming out and like he celebrates every single time, like the time two years ago where like he did that big thing and like kind of was just like this whoa celebration. And like I feel like he's just gonna start opening up this celebration and these, this freedom to just kind of be yourself is gonna be so, just gonna be so stunning. It's gonna be so great. You're just gonna get to enjoy yourself. And you're, and it's almost like you're gonna, in, like, appreciate yourself more because, like, how awesome you are. And you're gonna start to appreciate your own awesomeness. If that makes sense. And it's just gonna, it's gonna hit every area of all those things that we're going on around that. And he wants to, like, he wants to. I feel like he just wants to bless your footsteps, like your traveling places, like the places you've traveled and the things you've wanted to. It's almost like you wanted to see things, like, kind of take root in the places you went. I feel like he's like, he's gonna put, like, he's putting his mark on it, he's putting his stamp on it, to where it's like, they're blessed, they're blessed, and they're blessed in what we do. Of course, God's doing something up here, so you can keep praying if you want to, but we're not just missed. 